So I'm finally getting around to showing you the hatching rack that I built. Now, I'm doing this after editing the footage just because I didn't know how the footage was gonna come out. So I do mention in the video that this is a bit of a rush job, the video. Um, I didn't basically film everything. You are gonna hear the odd weird gurgle just because I've had to turn the pond off because that's coming in another video, but the pond is very loud. Um, so I need to, so I'm sort of working on a way to make that nice and quiet. Um, as soon as I've got that worked out, then I will be doing a video on the big fish pond that I've got in the snake room um, with all my little mini monsters, like arowanas and gar and all that sort of stuff. So I will be doing a video on that at some point, but I just want to try and work out how to silence that first. But um, yes, yeah, so this video is probably, oh, it's probably a couple of weeks now after I've actually built the rack. So it's sat here, it's all up, it's all functioning, it's completely full, um, and I still don't have enough room, even with this. this is a, it's a 42 tub rack, and I still don't have enough room for all my babies. I've had to sort of reuse some of the old hatching tubs that I used to use. So if you watched my videos before, you know I used to use little drawers that I 3D printed and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, there are quite a few bits missing now. I never said I was gonna do a how-to video. This was just gonna show you the basics of how I actually put this rack together. Um, I am gonna be making another one of these fairly soon. Um, now that I know measurements and what I need and how I went about everything, um, the second one's gonna be so much easier to make. It is literally a case of get all the metal ordered, get all pre-cut to size, just so I don't have to worry about any of that. And it'll be a case of just literally bolting it and riving it all together. So yeah, it's gonna be a lot quicker. So. If you do want to see a, a proper how-to, proper step-by-step -step way of how I built it, then I can do that sort of video. Uh, bear in mind, I don't really know what I'm doing. I do just make this stuff off of what I've seen and what I think goes together. Um, like these racks behind me, you can see, these have been up for probably over a year now, maybe close, just under that. And they're all doing absolutely perfect. All my snakes are thriving. As you'll see coming up, I do have multiple, multiple clutches, so they're all breeding, they're all feeding, shedding, so these are working really well, so there's no reason why this shouldn't work. And so far, I'd say about, out of all the hatchlings, half of them are pretty much feeding on their own. Um, there's a couple that I do need to assist feeding, there's others that just haven't taken food yet, which isn't an issue. Um, but again, they're all shedding, heat and temperature, everything like that seems absolutely perfect. I will, I'm not gonna go into that in this video because this is basically just how I made this, basically. Um, I will do an update video on this further down the line just so you can see everything that's going on. So, basically, I'll show the footage that I've got now, all the footage that I basically made of the rack, um, all the footage I took while making the rack, and then once I've, you've uh, seen all that, I'll then go in and show you all the bits that I kind of missed on that video, if that makes sense. Um, and that way you can see how it all sort of goes together, like the tops um, and everything else. So yeah, we'll jump straight into that footage. I have done it as like a, a voiceover just because I, again, I was in a bit of a rush when I was making the video. I needed to get this rack made urgently just because I did not have any space whatsoever. Um, and yeah, it will sort of make a little bit more sense afterwards at the end. So if you want to see all the technical stuff of how it all went together and tools and things like that, watch the middle part. Um, but if you want to just skip straight to the very end and see how the the, uh, the rack actually looks um, and all the little functions, things like that, then just, just skip towards the end. It's entirely up to you. Um, but yeah, if you are interested in seeing how I actually made this properly um, and you want to see a step-by-step -step how to of how I've done it, then let me know. If I don't get a lot of comments on it or a lot of people don't contact me through Instagram, whatever, um, then I'll probably just make the rack. Um, yeah. It's a lot of work doing it. I can see why it takes people months and months and months to film stuff and get it all done. Set. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff to make it half decent. There's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. So if it is something you want to know and, and see how to do, then yeah, I'm going to need quite a lot from you just to let me know. Um, but yeah, I'll jump straight into how I sort of all the technical stuff and then come back after all that and I'll show you the whole rack and, and how it's all working. So this video, um, I didn't actually record it and build the rack at the same time. It's sort of mix and match just because I was under a lot of a lot of time constraints. I needed to get this rack built basically in time for my hatching because I had so many. So it's a bit jumping backwards and forwards, but hopefully it should all make sense. So here you can see the sort of what I was going for. And the minute I'm just measuring up that top frame, as you can see that top bar I measured initially is a little bit longer than this bottom one. And that's just because of the way that I've built the frame. And you can see that this it is that way. So to cut aluminium, I found it quite difficult to actually cut this uh, this metal tubing. Um, I tried to just cut normally and no matter how hard I tried, it always ended up going at a weird angle. So the best way I found to do it was to mark how much material needed. I make a small mark 
and then I'll pick up a square edge and I'll go around the entire bar using that square, square edge drawing a line. So you'll see here I'm lining it up and I'll, I'll make that mark where I would originally cut. And then to make sure I was lining everything up, I'd rotate the bar around 90 degrees and then I'd match the square edge up with that line that I made and then I would draw another line. And all I'll do, I'll basically do this for all four sides of the bar. And that just ensured that the line that I wanted to cut was exactly the same all the way around basically. And, and it makes sense because if you've got a circular saw, you can just put on a circular saw, pull it straight down and it will cut straight away. Same as if you've got a table saw or a band saw or anything like that. When you cut it using any of them, it does cut dead straight. You don't have to worry about any weird angles. Whereas everything I've did, done in this video, it, it's all by hand. I haven't got any amazing tools to use it. Um, it's literally just using a hand hacksaw, hand drills, handheld rivet gun, and hand files. That's that's pretty much everything you need for this. So you can just go out, get the material, uh, the tools you need, and you, you can just make this at home. It is not that bad. So to make sure that I'm actually cutting this dead straight and making sure everything is, is perfect, I'll start off cutting on the right side of the line. Don't ever cut bang on the line, because then that's going to give you a big gap. So always try and cut to the side of the line if you can. That way, make sure your measurements are bang on. So you'll see I'm, I'm sort of scoring it, if that makes sense. So if you used to like fold, uh, like say cardboard or anything like that, you'd make a score line and then you'd, you'd use that as like a, a, a hinge so you could bend the cardboard. And I'm basically doing the same sort of thing here. So I'm going around the lines and you can see where the cut sort of starts on the corner. I sort of, you'll see the saw sort of start at a high angle and I slowly start to flatten the saw down as I get across the line. And I'll, I'll do that for all four sides and you'll see there's a little notch where the saw sort of touches towards the end. And that's how I know I've got all those lines basically in a dead straight line. So once I've got that, that is basically my guide mark for the cutting basically. So from here, all I've got to do is use them little uh, saw marks I've made and just use them as a guideline. So if you see here, I'm making sure I can see both sides of the, of the bar and I'm just cutting straight down those lines that I've made. Now it is almost like a, um, a little groove in the, in the metal and it sort of guides the saw where it needs to go anyway. Um, you can get carried away and go off at a weird angle, so you do need to keep an eye. But as you can see, I turn it 180 degrees over and I basically cut diagonally into the middle both sides. And that's what gives me a dead flat cut. And that's pretty much how I've cut all the metal throughout. Um, even with the runners and things like that, it just makes sure that that is a perfect cut basically. And then from here, all I do is I just take a normal file and I'll just gently sand down the ends of the, of the bars. Now you don't need to be too harsh with this because aluminium is really, really soft. You just need to give it a few passes just to take off any birds. And you can see I rotate the bar each time just to make sure I give it an even sanding all the way through. So the next stage you can see, these are the runners I've used. Um, I will get onto these at the end of the video, but for now, I won't talk about it. So I'm measuring from front to back just because I need the runners to be the full length of the tubs basically. Um, and I do check this along the whole thing for here. I'm just demonstrating one measurement, um, but yeah, I'm just measuring back to front. So these are the runners I use there. Um, I will have the, the code and stuff on them and what they are basically, but they're basically meant for like, I think you can put them on walls for racking to hold shelves up and things like that so you sort of screw these straight to the, the wall and then you can put hooks and shelving and things like that on them uh, they're not ideal but they they served a purpose at the time i thought i'd try them just because i saw them they are they were a cheaper option hence why they don't work as well but yeah it is what it is so with these you can cut these aren't actually aluminium these are made of like a steel material so i'll just cut these straight through and the cuts were pretty much solid so if you wanted to go down the cheaper route this is what they are they're from a company called form um and that, that's all I really know about them. I got these from B&Q, so there's the, the barcode number if you wanted to tap that in onto B&Q and try and find them. Um, but yeah, as you can see, they're just, yeah, it's just used for racking. You've probably seen these before. But yeah, they, they do a decent job. You just gotta bear in mind, there are a few flaws of them and they do make the tubs quite tight, so. So the next step was basically to start getting these little runners ready to attach to the aluminum bars. And I'll show you that in a little bit. But it's really difficult to get the rivet gun in between these to get the rivets flush. You wanna try and get the rivets as flush as possible just so they don't really mess with the tubs as such. Um, I will give close-ups of the where the rivets are and things like that just so you can see how they, they join. Um, but the first thing I need to do is I needed to cut like about an inch section away from the end of the runner. I think that's what I mark there. Then I also mark up at like a, a 45 degree angle as well. 
um, and that's just to make it a little bit easier for the tub to slide in and out just because the measurements on these weren't 100 percent these bars even though they all look the same they are all slightly different only a couple of mil if that um but i did realize that when i was going through each one so just just bear in mind to check what you buy basically um, but to cut these again, I, I pretty much just used the, the hand saw that I had, the hacksaw. And I did start off using a Dremel. Um, and the Dremel did work okay. It it did get snarled up because this stuff is it's like a, a steel. It's quite tough. The, the grinding discs would tend to get jammed every now and again. And it would sort of kick the Dremel out of my hand. So it was quite quite dangerous at times. Um, and also with the, the Dremel disc going... It would burn through the discs quite quickly and you'd sleep, you'd literally see them shrink before your eyes and they create quite a lot of dust, a lot of smoke and if you don't have proper protection one of these discs break then you probably are going to lose your eyesight. So I wouldn't recommend using them at all even though I, I pretty much built half of it using them. I just ditched it in the end and went just for a normal hacksaw. And it cuts through perfectly fine. I did it in two cuts in the end so you see I'm doing one cut first which sort of cuts down. Uh, this way and then I'll cut down the length of it and then after that I don't know if I've got it on camera or not but I sort of then cut the 45 degree angles I think I do show that a little bit later on um, but one end will have that slight angle just to help guide the drawing and then the, the tub in and then the other side is just dead flat it, it doesn't need anything so yeah the whole idea of that was just so I could get the rivet gun in place to actually rivet it so that piece I'm cutting out you see where I've cut that line all the way across that whole top piece there will be removed towards the end and then the bottom piece underneath that is actually where the, the rivet is going to go. Um, so I needed to make that section big enough just to get my rivet gun there. Now my rivet gun, I, I did have to modify that as well. I did get, um, I used my Dremel and I did grind off a, a, around the sides and stuff just to make the, the rivet gun a little bit smaller. It didn't affect it, it still worked perfectly. Um, it just meant that I could get into those, those smaller areas. So you can see once I've cut it out, be careful because that metal is quite hot and sharp. I did go around this with a file as well just to file off any burrs and things like that. But this is basically the, the end result. Um, and I will show you how it looks after I've cut it all for, uh, finally. You'll be able to see both ends of it. So here you can see what I was talking about. I was marking that 45 degree angle bit there. And again, just using a normal hacksaw, I would literally just cut straight across there. Um, it does leave some quite sharp corners and I found that if you don't shave these bits down um, then it will actually mark the tubs so it's, it's really important that you basically file them down. And this is what the end result looks like so you've got that first bit with the slant on at one end and then the other end is just a normal square end. Like I said that square end doesn't really matter that's going to be at the back it's, it's not going to form any real issues at all but yeah that's the sort of thing that you're looking for and it's important to do it. Um, and make sure you get them both opposite so as you can see don't cut them all exactly the same you have to mirror it on both sides because obviously if you don't you're going to be cutting it on the wrong side and it's just going to mess the whole thing up so you need to make sure you mirror them so they they go opposites basically and again when i show you the rack that will make more sense so now we're going to look at the bit where i actually um, attach these runners to the the metal bars so that bit that I cut out, that's where the rivet's going to go. So as you can see, I'm drilling a hole through just big enough for the end of the rivet to go in. Now, again, these don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be in a, a specific place. Um, I just eyeballed them, basically. I tried to get as close to the edge of the rail as I could, um, just so that in order I could get the rivet gun in there and make sure the rivets actually went flat rather than sticking up at a slight angle. Um, if you ever do rivet in, you, you'll understand what I mean when you do it. It's quite hard to explain it. Um, but yeah, afterwards I'll just shave them down with a file just to make sure there's no rough burrs. It just ensures that it, it sits completely flat with the actual aluminium bars. So the reason you need to make sure you mirror them is because obviously they need to be an opposite so that when you put them on the bars like this, you can see it kind of makes a little bit more sense. So the tub is actually going to slide in between them two. So again, I didn't do any amazing measurements here. Um, I sort of roughed it out and guesstimated just because I was sort of feeling my way through it. When I make the second one of these, I might actually do a step-by-step -step video with me actually talking in the video, um, just because it will make more sense and because I've got a rough, I've got a better idea of what I'm doing now, basically. So as you can see, I don't really measure it. I just hold it in place, make sure it's all nice and level, and I just slowly drill into the aluminium. 
Now, when drilling aluminium, be careful because it's a bit like when you cut it with a saw. Um, the drill will tend to wander across the aluminium, depending on what drill bits you use. As long as they're sharp enough, they should go straight through. Um, mine were fairly dull because of whatever I've been using them for before. So they did tend to sort of wander on the metal bit. So you do have to sort of clamp these rails in place. But once you've got that drill um, hole through, that's when you can use your rivet gun. So while this video is going on, you'll see this rivet gun. You'll see that it's all sort of uh, ground down around the edges. That's just where I made it smaller. So if you don't know what a rivet is, this is what a rivet looks like. Um, I do have a little video of how the rivets work. So you will see that at some point. So all I need to do is place that rivet through. The rivet gun goes over the top and then it's a case of just squeezing it nice and tight, putting down firm pressure and actually making that rivet hold where it needs to be. Um, always try and line everything up as best you can. I did put a couple of these in and then realised they were slightly wonky. So I had to drill. You can drill the rivets out. It's not an issue. Um, it's just annoying. But you can drill the rivet out and then you can do it again if you need to. Um, but yeah, it's it's literally as simple as that. It, it doesn't take long at all. And you can see it's quite a clean look. A lot of these rivets you're not going to see. If this rack was sort of head height, you probably would see it. Um, but to be honest, because it's, this is on the floor, I'm, I'm not too bothered about it. But you can see that rivet on the inside and see how it expands. I will show a video of how it expands. It, it took me quite a few attempts to try and get it. Um, but yeah, you, I will sort of show you how a rivet works. So once this one's on, um, I basically did the other side. You can see... I wasn't really too worried about filming all this properly. Um, it was just a case of just trying to get the, the bare points in place. Um, but yeah, trying to get camera angles and things like that was an absolute nightmare. I wasn't working with a great deal of space at the time. Um, but yeah, all I'm going to do is exactly the same thing for the other end. Um, and that sort of made my frame. And what I would do is then, after doing this side, I'd go straight down the other end and I would do exactly the same thing for the other end. Um, and that, that basically made my square frame as such. So from there, all I had to do was place all the runners in, in the position I needed them to be. Um, and I actually used the tubs to sort of space them out where I needed them to be. So it, it sort of helped me gauge rather than having to sit there and measure each one and, and try and work on my dodgy measurements. It was a case of just putting all the tubs in place, getting the rough idea of where I needed them and then popped them in. So exactly the same thing, I'm literally just holding it in place, I'm not measuring, I'm just making sure everything is lined up as best I can get it, and just, yeah, going straight in with the drill, chucking the rivet in place, and making sure it's all nice and secure. So if you don't know how a rivet works, um, you can see there's like a little ball on the end, and then you've got that pin that's attached to the ball, that goes all the way through, and that's the bit that goes into the rivet gun. Now as you squeeze it, it pulls that ball up, and as you can see, it expands the rivet, and that's all that basically happens, that's what actually secures it. The metal just expands and holds it in place. So as I mentioned, to line them all up, I basically just put the tubs in place with the runners and I just went down the line, gauging each one, making sure they weren't too stiff. And then this is how it would look after it was done. So you can see everything mirrors each other. All the rivets are in place. They're not exactly the same. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're not going to see any of it, but yeah, that's basically how I lined it all up. So I did it for the front and then I went all the way around to the back and did exactly the same. So for actually um, joining this onto the main part of the frame, um, I just found these little L brackets. They were nice and cheap. They come in packs of 20 from B&Q. Um, and that's basically what I was using. I'm not bolting them on, I'm not screwing them on. Again, I'm just riveting these on. Um, they're really strong, they're really sturdy. And yeah, they, they did the job perfectly. So like all the other stuff, I didn't really measure this. I, I just held it in place and drilled it to where I needed it to be. It's really important that when you do this, you try and get the bracket as flush with the end of the metal as you can. If not, a little bit further in. Because if you end up overlapping the edge of that bracket on this metal, it will create a gap. So when you put the whole frame together, there will be a slight gap. And I have got that on one of them for where I, obviously I, I didn't check it properly. Um, but I'll always rivet it in place first. I'll always drill one in place, line it all up, make sure it's all perfect. And then I'll always get that first rivet in just to secure the whole thing in place. Um, that way, I don't have to worry about the holes matching up or anything like that. Once that's in place, I can just go straight in, drill the second hole, and then jobs are good. Un. Now, the whole frame is actually held together with these little L brackets. I'll, again, I'll show that towards the end of the video, just so you can see where I've placed all the brackets. It will, it'll make more sense once the whole thing is together. Um, but yeah, these little L brackets were absolutely amazing. I ended up going for a couple of packs of these just because of how many I needed to use, basically. 
Um, I needed to make the entire frame really strong as well, so using these on each corner of the frame, again, it worked perfectly, but I will show you that at a later video. So you can see the two rivets there. You can see one rivet at the very bottom of that metal. That's what's holding the actual joint, uh, the, the rail on, and then there, that top rivet goes pretty much opposite. They don't mess with each other, um, and it makes it really strong. So this next bit is how I actually attach each one of them rows onto the frame. So you can see how the frame's all put together there. Um, I made the top frame that you can see the top left corner. I made that top frame first. And then I just put a couple of uprights on, on all four corners as the legs. And then I made another bottom frame that goes on the bottom. So that's how it all goes together. It's, it's really, really simple. It's, you can make it any way you want, but this is just the way that I, I wanted to do it. So for this bit, I did actually do a lot of measurements because I needed to make sure this was absolutely perfect. I needed to make sure the gap between each row was exactly the same, just because where they're all lined up perfectly, you will see it. If you sort of have a keen eye and you get the right angle, you will be able to see any imperfections if you don't measure it properly. Um, so I took quite a long time doing this, just to make sure it was absolutely perfect. And then the next bit was basically making sure that once it was lined up, it all looks straight. So I do fiddle around this for quite a while. Um, you'll see me sort of going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, up and down, up and down, just because I wanted to make sure when I drilled that first hole, everything was straight. So when I put this first row in place, you can see as I'm putting it in, I've got the old brackets there. As I put it in, I need to make sure it's pretty much dead straight on all the lines I made on all four corners. If the, the angle was off a little bit and I drilled the hole, imagine that hole is the pivot point and it may look straight. If it's not, as soon as you straighten that row, it will actually throw the whole thing out of sync and stuff won't line up perfectly. So this part's really, really important. You need to spend quite a lot of time on it, making sure everything is dead straight. Even with the, I got the tape measure out at one point and I was actually using the tape measure to make sure everything's perfect. So at the minute I'm down the other side, you can see I'm lining it up with the line that's down there, top and bottom, and then I'll come back over to this side and I'll do exactly the same thing this side. Now, I did actually take it out just because one of the brackets I had put in a little bit wrong. Um, it was hanging over a little bit, so there was actually a gap on the metal. So I took it out, I re-drilled the rivet holes, took the rivets out, and then re riveted it to make sure it would sit perfectly. So again, I went through the same process, levelling everything up, making sure it was all perfect. Um, and then after that, I actually looked at securing in place. Now, you do use quite a lot of rivets. You can see on the floor those little metal... Um, like cylinders, that was a lovely, lovely view of my armpit there. But you will see on the floor, there's loads of little bits of metal, little lines of metal, um, and that's basically all the ends of the rivets. It does create a lot of mess. I did have to go around for hoovering the end and hoover all this up. You can see all the like the little bits of metal that have come out where I've been drilling. So if you are gonna do this, be careful. You may wanna wear uh, some form of respirator or mask, just so you're not inhaling any, any dust, basically, because aluminium can be very fine. It's quite a light material. It, it, if the wind gets up, it will kick up dust. You will inhale it, and that's the last thing you want to do. Um, and yes, throughout the whole thing, for the health and safety people out there, you will see that I'm wearing shorts. I am wearing flip-flops. I'm not wearing goggles. No, I'm not wearing gloves. And yes, I am using power tools and everything like that. So before you jump in the comments, start having a go at me. I don't care, I don't want to hear it, your comment will just be deleted and you will be hidden from the channel, so I don't care. But if you are going to do it, I do suggest wearing proper uh, safety equipment, because you will see on my hands throughout the video there are nicks, there are cuts. I did get cuts on my legs, and yes, I know it's my own fault, I should have wore the right gear, but that's just not how I work, this is how I work. So, getting back to the video, you can see, it's exactly the same thing I've done on most of the other things. I didn't measure anything really apart from the, the distance I needed it. I literally just put it in place, made sure it was all lined up, and then I drilled the holes. And again, I drill this first hole, and you can see at this point, the drill's taken quite a long time to get through, and that's just from where I was cutting the, uh, the, the actual steel runners. I was using the same drill. I think I just made it a little bit blunt, basically. But normally, with a sharp drill, it should just fly through aluminium. So if you are gonna drill it, Take your time with it because you don't want to make any mistakes, just slow and steady just to get through. So I'll put that first rivet in just to make sure it held everything in place. You can see I'm lining everything up, checking it's all dead straight, and I'll get that first rivet on just to secure it in place. That way I know when I go around with the drill, everything's pretty much going to be spot on, um, and yeah, it's just making sure everything looks nice and clean, nice and tidy. So this is the final result, so as you can see, 
all the tubs are in. I've got them all labeled up. There's random stickers here, there and everywhere. There's clutch numbers and things on them. So yeah, this, this rack is in full swing. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been doing brilliantly for me. I'm, I'm really happy with the way that it's turned out. Um, but yeah, so after watching the actual uh, video for the middle part of this, it shows you the sort of technical side of it and, and what I did and how I did it and things like that. So hopefully, now that you've watched that, if you have watched that, I can sort of show you all the bits that I didn't really talk about and hopefully it'll all kind of make a little bit more sense. Um, but yeah, so you'll see, we'll start, we'll start from the top of it and we'll work our way down. So you'll see if I show you on this corner, so this bit of metal runs all the way along the top. So that is that top part and then you'll see this bit is actually longer than the bit below it. So the way I I did uh, wanted to make this was in, well, kind of like I made the big racks behind me um, in that similar sort of way, but it, it was going to be slightly different because of what I'm using, because it is just rivets. So I made this initial top frame and that's what was going to be sort of half of the frame. And then from there, I've got these upright bits which make the middle part, and then the bottom bit is exactly the same as this. So I've made that top frame on its own, the bottom frame on its own, and it's just joined by these middle bits, and there's four of them on each corner, obviously. So these bits on the inside, they're slightly shorter, and that's just because I didn't want to have to make these bits long and then use a load of small sections in the middle here. I wanted it to be as strong as possible because it is just rivets, it's not welded or anything like that. So rather than just have these small little tiny bits in the middle, which are gonna be quite flimsy, I made them in long bits. So it's basically making it as strong as possible. So you can see in the corner, that's how it's attached basically. I've just got an L bracket and then you can see there's four rivets holding it all in together. And that's basically it, that's that's all it is. If you come around to the side, there's there's nothing holding on to the side. These runners, they're not actually attached to this. These runners are only attached to them long bits there. Um, and you'll see as we go down, all the corner bits are riveted in. And to honest, they don't look too bad. Um, you don't really notice them. Cause when you look at the overall rack, if I show you over here, you get a better view. This is what the rack looks like from there. You can see them, but they don't look horrible. They kind of match in because of the color. They, they all kind of blend in really. Um, and also when I was mentioning about with um, with these runners, now these runners, they're not great. They're made of steel and they do rust. Um, you can see here, these ones here have started to rust. So it's not ideal as such, but I've got a plan. I'm gonna get a little bit of sandpaper paper on these, get them off, and then I'm gonna buy a liquid chrome pen. And I'm literally just gonna color all of these in and it is like a paint. Um, so it will cover that, it should protect it, and it will basically just match in with that. So that's a little bit of a top up. So when I was talking in the video about them runners having their drawbacks, that is one of them. The other thing about them is that they don't sit perfectly flush, which I don't like. <laughs> it does mess with my OSD, so you can see there's that small gap there, and there is a small gap there. So next time I do this, I will be using the same, uh, if I show you this one, this type of aluminium runner instead, just because they are perfectly square, they'll sit together perfectly. and yeah they just look much much nicer so once i get that other rack built uh, this one is going to be going into that space over there this will basically just be an overflow rack out to the side um, and yeah the nice new proper one that i've made a little bit better will be here so yeah it might be a time that it comes that uh, if this rack becomes completely empty i might take all of these out and just replace them with those aluminium runners it it'd be quite a long job it would be really <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna say it. it'll be really bad put it politely so I probably won't do that this will just be over to the side out of the way where no one's really going to see it so that's based that and then I mentioned on these runners as well about the rivets um, so there they're the rivets underneath that I said you're not really going to see if you're le eye level with it you're probably going to see it but this is on the floor so you don't you don't see any of that um, and they sit in there quite nicely you can see the gaps above the tubs are pretty much perfect i've not had any babies get out of these tubs i've not had any of them try and push their way out or anything like that so yeah they can't get out there's enough ventilation so they they're pretty much happy in there so for the tops um i've used that same corrugated um polycarbonate sheeting that i used on my large racks um, and these are just gl gl uh, glued in place gl 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 yeah just glued in place you can see there's a little bit of glue there and i basically did that for every level um this sits on top of the runners so it's flush against that so the babies can't get on top of the runners um and yeah it just creates enough of a gap for the airflow and yeah they they work absolutely perfect this is a great insulator as well this is probably better than glass insulation 
Um, again, I didn't want to use metal just because it'd be way too expensive and metal does rust if you don't get the right one. And so yeah, this, this stuff works perfect. So that's on each one. Now the heating, you can see in here, just because it is extremely dark, it's not gonna focus. There you go, you can just see them in there. So the heating on this rack is exactly the same on my big rack. Um, I can show you that actually. So this is the heating on my big rack. You can see I've used this conduit or it's like cable trunking sort of thing. Um, I've used this exactly the same. I can actually show you it from the other end actually. So if I come the other end of my snake room, you can see where that runs. So on this, um, I've literally just got two bits. That's all I've got, that's enough heating. And then they go all the way along. Now I've made them extra long. So when I make this other rack, um, I can just run two whole of two racks off of one single heat cable um, and that's perfect. So this is a, a tub of 42, a rack of 42 rather. So in total there'll be 84 hatchling tubs um, and that'll be one plug, one, one heat source, one thermostat, one plug. Lovely, absolutely perfect for what I want. Um, and eventually what I will do is with all them cables that are down there, um, I am going to use the silver tape that I've used to insulate and put that over the top of it. That way it just makes it a little bit more safe. Um, I need to ensure that none of the heat cables are actually touching in any places. Uh, that way I can make sure there's as there's, there's low a risk of fire as possible. Um, I am getting some new thermostats in which are Bluetooth and Wi-Fi enabled. So if anything happens, if there's a power cut, if there's a heat spike or a low spike in the temperature, um, it will send me a notification straight away. And I do have a camera out here as well that I need to mount up properly. So I can actually just tap into that whenever I need to, just to make sure everything's all right. Um, I'm looking at doing a cam for the fish pond as well, so that you can basically look in and see the fish pond any time you want, basically. Um, it's, it's quite hard because I need to get the Wi-Fi out here stronger because the camera's going to be up on this wall looking down. Um, but that'd be a really cool feature that you can actually see them whenever you want, basically. So that's something I might think about in the future. Um, and yeah, that's that's basically it. That's, that's how the whole rack works. Now, I did mention that some of these drawers are a little bit stiff. So when you come to ones like this, this one moves quite nice. It gets caught a little bit at the end. But to get around that, you just squeeze the tub and it comes out nicely. So I've got a nice little GHI in there. Um, he did ruin his bowl, so I do need to redo that. Um, some of them are a little bit smoother, so I think this one's like this one's a little bit sticky as well. So this one sticks a little bit. Uh, this one's nice and smooth, as you can see. This one comes out nicely, so it's a bit hit and miss with them, um, and that is all because of these little runners that I did choose. So when I eventually get the uh, aluminium ones and make the new rack, they'll be even smoother. But yeah, that's that's overall how I did it. If you want to ask me any questions on how I've done it, you can pop a question down below on the video or send me a message on Instagram. It doesn't matter how, even if you if you want to know how, what saw to buy it or what drill bit to buy it or what 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 a rivet is or anything like that. If there's any any question you want answered, just just give me a shout because I know what it's like when you sort of you start from the bottom, you don't really know what you're doing, and you just feel silly asking silly questions, things like that. Just just ask me. I, I don't really care. Any any question is a good question as long as it's not taking a piss. If that makes sense. So yeah, that that's basically how I've built it. It's gone together perfectly. Um, I, for a, a random one, so this rack is a bit like this first one that I built. Um, this was kind of like a tester, just to see if it would work, if I, if I could make it work. Um, and then the other two that I built, uh, they were the final product. And it, even these, I, I don't think there's anything I would actually change about them. I think they're, they're pretty much perfect the way they are. So um, yeah, I can't complain. So the same with this one. This one was like a, a tester as such, and I'm happy the way it's gone together. It, it's pretty solid. It's got a little bit of wobble, um, but to be honest, it doesn't matter with the tubs and everything. It's got so that much weight to it that it doesn't matter, uh, doesn't move. Now I have built this in one solid unit. Um, if you wanted to build it modular, so you could build the levels up and take the levels off, I don't know how well that would work. I don't think it'd be structurally sound. I think it would have like a <laughs> that kind of motion because it, it wouldn't be very very secure. So if you are going to do this, it's a bit like my racks behind me. Um, I do build them in one solid unit. They're not like. Not, compartmental you can't take them apart if that makes sense um, but yeah now I've built this I'm pretty confident that the next one I'm going to build is going to be pretty much perfect all the rivets um, they hold it together pretty well 
adjusting it. I've thrown this, this thing around quite a bit, just moving it, getting it into place, taking it back out, adjusting it and putting it back in. And yeah, the rivets have held perfectly. I can't, I can't fault them in any way. So you don't need welding skills. You don't need to have glue. You don't need to worry about nuts and bolts. Riveting, as far as I'm concerned, is pretty much bang on. Now, I'll quickly, I'll quickly show you from where I am just so you can sort of gauge what I'm talking about. So along here was where I used to have them hatchling tubs. Um, if you've been on my videos, you'll know what I'm talking about. Now they have all moved up to here. So the majority of the snakes that were down here are now up there. So this ideally up here, I was gonna put a huge fish tank up there. Um, and yeah, as, as always, as you know, I'm very indecisive. I've changed my mind again. This is gonna be a full snake rack. So literally from the corner of here all the way along and pretty much up to the city it might be one less than that but yeah that's all going to be snake racks that's going to be where my grow out rack is going to be so they're going to be a little bit bigger than these tubs um, and yeah that's going to be for my grow ons and i'm going to hopefully make that exactly the same way that i've made this so the tubs are going to be bigger um so there's going to be more weight um I'm probably going to make it in two halves as well, but yeah, it's going to be with tubs slightly smaller than this. I, I can't remember what tubs they're going to be now. It's one of the LP ones. Um, but yeah, that will be coming up in another video. So I'm going to attempt to make a nice big rack all the way across there. And hopefully using just rivets as well, it'll, it'll be solid. So that's another build coming up. Um, that's going to be a long, long way off just yet. So don't, don't expect that anytime soon. It'll probably be nearer to next year, if anything. Um, but yeah, that is one that will be coming up. But yeah, look at it, it looks so good. It looks nice without all this tape. This tape's just temporary. It's not gonna be there. Um, once I get all the cards and stuff written up and put on there properly, all this is gonna go. And I'm trying to think of a way of making it look a little bit cleaner so you can't see what they are unless you really look if that makes sense but I'm, I'm working on that but yeah I'm, I'm really happy with the way it's turned out it does look the nuts so I'm aware this is going to be a long video um, there are going to be people that are just like I'm bored of this now but if you are interested in doing it I do suggest watching the whole thing just because it, it just breaks it all down um, but yeah I hope you've enjoyed it like I said at the beginning if you do want to see a proper step-by-step -step how to video this is not a how to this is just the main points as such but if you want a proper step-by-step -step how to video then I do need to get quite a lot from this video I do need to have a lot of people ask me because if you don't I'm just not going to bother because it is a lot of work as I said um, but hopefully you've enjoyed that hopefully it sort of opened your eyes to that you can do this stuff with minimal kit minimal skills you don't need to be a mechanic or engineer or anything like that you can do these things if you take your time do a little bit of research on what you need to do and yeah you can you can make stuff and save yourself an absolute fortune um, and build racks that are as almost as good as like, the professionals if not maybe even better depending on where you go so yeah it's, it's definitely well worth it um, but yeah I'm, I'm happy with it and I just want to get the other one built now so it's even better than this one that's not that bad but it is what it is so hopefully you've enjoyed it hopefully you've got something out of it like I said message me if you need to know anything no no question is silly any question is welcome but yeah thank you for watching i really do appreciate it and i'll see you in the next one